All right, we'll get started on our Bible study this evening. Thank you all for being here. Thank our viewers for tuning in. We'll give just a moment for everybody to get in and get settled. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. Verse number 7 will be our study for this evening. Hebrews 11, 7. Eleven seven. Again, we'll take prayer requests at the end of the service. We have studied about a man by the name of uh, Abel, Enoch, and tonight we'll be studying about Noah a little while. Good study there on the on the studies of Noah. Oliver B. Green has a Great study. You can go on the gospelhour.org or .com, which is .org, I believe it is. <clears throat> and you can order his series. He just completed his radio broadcast of that series on As It Is in the Days of Noah. It's a good study. And uh, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff to see where we're at in the days that we live. So, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7, By faith Noah... Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Father, take the word of God tonight. Help me to deliver it in the way that you would be pleased. Help me to recall the studies you've given us this day. And, Lord, may you get honor, glory, and praise for all that's done. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, we're going to look at Noah a little bit this evening. We've talked about uh, uh, Enoch, um, and we've talked about Abel. Uh, Abel's worship pleased God. Enoch's walk pleased God. Now we're going to look at Noah's work pleased God. God likes worship. God's like, God likes to walk with His people, and God likes a working people. Amen. Noah lived in the same environment that was progressively getting worse that Enoch lived in. So remember, Enoch walked with God, and God took him. Enoch, a picture of the rapture. Noah is a picture of the judgment of God upon the earth, and a picture of the people of Israel, the, the Jews. Uh, in the judgment time, so you, you get your timelines there sort of lined up, helps you a little bit. Uh, Noah remained faithful in these times and these circumstances. A good, a good encouragement to us in our days. Uh, could you imagine the ridicule that Noah uh, had to take during his time as he preached and taught that the judgment of God was coming, that the floods was going to be upon the face of the earth, and they needed an ark, needed a big old boat to get in to be saved. Hadn't never rained yet. They'd never seen rain. They didn't even know what rain was. And it sort of shows as what we're dealing with today. We talk to folks about the rapture. What rapture? What are you talking about? We ain't never had a rapture. Ain't never seen such a thing. Just because you ain't seen it yet don't mean it ain't coming true. So Noah here, being encouraged of God, warned of God, of things not seen as yet, was moved with fear. And we'll deal with a little bit of that tonight as we look at that. Now most preachers will preach that for 120 years Noah preached about the judgment that was to come. Most writers that I've read behind write of Noah preaching 120 years. So it'll give you a good study to go dig that up and see if you can confirm or not whether Noah preached 120 years. Give you something to look at. Uh, a lot of folks thought that Noah may have lost his mind, gone stir crazy or something to go around preaching of a judgment of Something they had never heard of. Now, if you read in the book of Matthew and the book of Luke, as it was in the days of Noe, N-O-E is the way it's spelled in the New Testament. 
uh, several times. But you go study there in the book of Matthew, you find how things were in the days of Noe, how things were progressively evil, as God speaks of in Genesis 6, that the, the things had gotten worser and worser uh, in those days. The wickedness, every imagination of man was wickedness. And we're at that point in these days, we're finding out how wicked man's mind is uh, by the transgression of our laws. They catch them in doing things that are much more than wicked. And we see where people's minds are. It's a very, very bad state that we're in in these days. And the computer world has not helped that in any way, shape, or form. If a man had perversion of the mind and wanted to look at things that were wicked, he had to go into a certain store and buy those things, and everybody's seen him buy those things. Now he can do those things at home, and nobody knows it until something bad happens, and he gets caught with that. Uh, the perversion of the computers is terrible. Uh, I'll just tell you straight up, I hate them. I really do. I've learned to hate the computer world. I like an old-fashioned book in my hand. I use a computer. I used one this afternoon to type up my outlines. I can go back to a typewriter. If they had destroyed the computers, I'd be happy. I'll go back to a typewriter. It don't bother me. I'm doing the same action. It's just the difference of where it's saved at versus putting in the filing cabinet. Amen. Uh, I can go dig stuff out of a filing cabinet. Sometimes you lose it when it's in a computer. So... Uh, but that makes things easier and sets up things for things to come. Now, Noah remained faithful, and when the flood waters uh, were upon the face of the earth, he and his family were safe in the ark. When the flood waters were removed, he and his family stepped off as the only people alive in the whole wide world. Think of that. The only folks alive upon this earth. Noah is an example here that Paul is using to encourage the Jewish people as they're going through troubles and trials and being persecuted that the God of heaven is faithful to deliver and to take care of his people even in harsh times and that we as believers are being set up as kings and priests you find in the book of Revelation and after the judgment falls, we'll set up as kings and priests, as it was with Noah. Noah steps off the ark. Noah is the man. You ever thought of that? There is no kings. There is no rulers on the face of the earth over Noah when he steps off the ark. So God's judgment will clear off all the corrupt leaders one day. So we got something to look for. We got, we got hope that one day we'll have the just and the righteous judge that will set feet upon the earth and will rule with a righteous hand. Amen? So we're thankful for that. Now, there's a lot of different things that we can look at as we study in this about the, the days of Noah. Corey, go pull a piece of paper off the printer there. You know where the printer's at? I left my piece of paper there. Um, much to look at and think about on the days of Noah uh, gives us some good study. There's only, there's only the one verse here in the Hall of Fame that, that deals with Noah, yet there is many years of labor in Noah. Uh, there is a lot of work that Noah did in those days. Great work and powerful work. So much that we have it now to read and study and learn of. And uh, I want you to think a little bit about Noah. As we look here in the Hall of Fame, thank you, son. As we look here in the Hall of Fame on Noah, I want you to think just a minute. Let me ask you a question. Why is Noah listed here? Just think about that a minute. Why is Noah listed here in the Hall of Fame that the Apostle Paul is using to encourage. Now, the purpose of this is to encourage the Jews. His faith. 
Anyone else got a thought or a process for why Noah? Yes, sir. His fear. You cheated, didn't you? He sure did. He's reading the papers. He come in here. Uh huh. See, he ain't as dumb as he acts sometimes. So when you look at Noah and you see his faith has got him registered here in the Hall of Fame. Noah's fear has got him registered here in the Hall of Fame. His fame has got him registered, but also his finished work. Now, I want us to think about his faith just a minute. He has faith in the Word of God. Because of his faith in the Word of God, it caused him to do a work. God came to Noah, warned Noah. So the Word of God came to Noah, warned him of a judgment to come. So Noah's faith is in the Word of God. Everybody get that? What God told Noah, he believed. God, help us. God, help us to believe what he said. That we'll move in faith because of our faith to do something for God. Now, the fear in, in Noah is, is something I'm going to deal with a little bit tonight. I want you to understand the fear that Noah has is not a fear of God himself in a wrongful way, but in a righteous way. And I'll show you that in a minute. But his fear was not for himself. Think about this. Listen. His fear was not for himself. Noah's fear was for the world. The Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah knows that he's okay. Noah's talking with God. Noah knows that his family's safe. Noah's walking with God. Noah's fear is what is coming on the world. Folks he knows, friends he has. Noah has a fear for them because he believed God is going to bring forth judgment. If we as a church body, as a church family could get a hold of this and believe what God has said, if we truly believe it, it should move us. Fear of the judgment of Almighty God coming upon our people, our friends and family that we know, if we truly believe what God said, and we really believe that the rapture is imminent, we would not sit still on these pews and be more worried about the things of the world than we are about the things of God. If you believe tonight that your family was in danger of judgment from God, you wouldn't go home prowl up and prop your feet up. You'd put some action on it. You love them. You wouldn't sit back and say, well, it's all going to be merry. Everything's great. If we truly had the faith that Noah had, for the 100, 120 years that Noah lived after the warning from God, he worked and labored and told to the sweat of his brow as much as he could, preaching God's going to judge and telling folks God's going to judge. He worked tirelessly and, and, and timelessly to bring forth that what would be, be a saving hope for people because he believed God. Fear moved upon him. Caused him to work hard, not for himself, but for those others about him. Do we really, do we really, church, do we really love sinners enough to move for them? Do we love them enough to labor for them? Do we love the sinners enough to sacrifice for them? To present the best that we can and do the best that we can that they might see we love God that much and we love them that much. Are we moved with faith? 
And because of that faith, a fear in our heart causes us to do things for the glory of God. Noah had a fame. Here he's registered as an heir of righteousness. Noah's fame is that he's an heir of righteousness. Noah's fame is that he's received righteousness through faith in God. Boy, what about our fame? What do we want to be famous for? What's, what's, what's really in our heart that we want to be known for or be famous for? Is it for God or for us? I mean, really, are we, are we so overwhelmed with the God stuff, the faith of God, and the fear of God in our lives that we truly want to live a life that others know us because of our God or because of how good we are? We want everybody to know how much money we've got. How successful we have been with our lives. Look at the great things I've done. Problem we've got a lot of times in our churches are we are still filled with pride. We're not more concerned about the sinners going to hell. We're more concerned about what everybody thinks, how good we are. How much I've accomplished or how much money I've attained. Now y'all, y'all, y'all don't be messing with me. Y'all getting me in a preaching mode. I'm supposed to be teaching. By faith, Noah. He had faith in God. That God was going to do what he said he was going to do in that saving folks by the ark and bringing judgment on those that refuse to believe God's word. Do we really believe, do we really believe that God is going to bring judgment on those that do not follow Him in faith? I would that God would help us tonight by faith to get a view of the judgment of God that is about to fall upon our land, our families, a lot of us has got families that ain't in church like they need to be. They're not serving God like they should be. Though they may be saved, they still can face a judgment from God. The judgment God brought in my life brings fear in my heart for my family. I know what it is to suffer. I know what it is to be in worry. I know what it is to wonder, is God going to forgive? Is God going to move in this situation? Is God going to save my children? I know what that fear is. And I don't want my children to have to walk through that valley. Though sometimes it appears they're going to head right down the same road Daddy did. <clears throat> That's the danger of what we do because we have children that so will sometimes follow our footsteps. We oftentimes are more concerned about our fame of what we've done rather than the faith of what he's done through us. Much works at the judgment seat of Christ will go up in a puff of smoke. I don't want to have labored the years of salvation, the years I've been saved. I don't want those years to, when I stand before the Lord, go up in a puff of smoke as a labor for self rather than a labor for the Savior. And those things that we do of the flesh, those things that we do for our own good, those things that we do out of pride will burn, slap up at the judgment seat of Christ. Only those things that we've done for His honor and those things that we've done for His glory will pass the test. So I wonder, when we look at all the accolades of our life and all the great things that we've accomplished, What's that going to mean in eternity? Oh, we've received the praise of man. Oh, how great we've been. Oh, how great we've done. How, what great accomplishments we have. But what are they going to be compared to? Would they got, would they been what we need to get written down in the hall of fame? Will folks down the road remember us for being like Noah? 
or are we going to be remembered for being more like the world? In the days of Noah, there was a few that had faith. But in the days of Noah, there were a great number of folks that were about their flesh. That's where we are today. We've got a lot of folks today that live more for their own good than they do for God's glory. And in that number, we've got folks that claim to be saved by the grace of Almighty God. Yet they live more for their own personal pride than for the glory of God. Help us, Jesus. Noah did right in bad times. He had fame. The times were worse in the days of Noah than they were in the days of Enoch. But Noah finished his work. I wonder how many of us have started a work for the glory of God, yet we've not finished it. We've got unfinished tasks that God has called us to do that we got frustrated, we got aggravated, we got sidelined because of somebody else. Either we didn't get the glory we thought we should or somebody else complained about something the way that we were doing it and we quit doing it because of that. I know folks that are sitting at home tonight because somebody in a church didn't give them the pat on the back or the glory that they thought they deserved. They've got upset and sideways with the church because of somebody rather than because of their service for the glory of God. See, that comes back to who you serving. You serving Him? Or are we serving for the glory of self? Oh, what a great song they sung. What a great pianist we have. What a great choir we have. What a great... Is it about us or is it about Him? God help us to be about Him. Noah's in this hall of fame of faith because he had faith in God and fear the judgment of God on the world that he lived in. We are going to be here when God calls the church out and judgment falls and those that we can't talk into getting on the ark will suffer eternal damnation. His finished work come because of his faith and his fear of what God said and it caused him to function the way that he did. His functioning gave proof of God's warning to be true and it brought condemnation upon them for their unbelief in what God said. As a preacher of the gospel, I come to the pulpit, I bring forth the warning that God places in my heart for this time or the word of encouragement and folks will either receive it or Deny it. It's based on what they want to do with it. But I have a responsibility to bring it forth. Noah brought forth the truth. And many of them laughed him and scorned him to their own damnation. They were condemned. The Bible says that Noah was moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his family, by the which he condemned the world. That condemnation that they faced was because they would not believe the word of God that Noah brought. By his faith, his fears, and functions, he brought proof to God's warning and thus condemnation upon the world by their unbelief. John Phillips outlines this about, Mose, uh, about Noah by this. He says, he was mindful of the word of God. He was moved for fear of God. He was mighty in his service of God. He built a boat, listen now, he built a boat much larger than he needed for his family. What are we doing in our days that would equal Noah? Why not? You ain't no different than Noah. You're no different than Noah. God will use you the same as he used Noah. Noah was just a man that was willing to follow by faith what God had said. God has said to us, church, that we're to go forth into the world and teach and preach 
them of the gospel. We're to train them up. What are we doing? Are we more like Noah or are we classified more like the world these days? Are we whining and dining ourselves while the world goes to hell? Forgive me, Lord. Are we marked as a child of God as Noah was? Mindful of the Word of God, moved with fear of God, mighty in His service to God? Marked as a child of God. What do our folks think of us concerning our walk with the Lord? How, how, how impressive are we about how, how much we love God? Or are we more impressive of how much of a, what we are here than the God things? You know, they... They, they know us more by our trade. They know us more by our treasures. They know us more by our, our, our abilities. Noah was moved with fear because of his faith, and it caused him to function in a way that got him pinned down in the hall of fame of faith to be used as an encouragement to the children of Israel. Persecution's coming, children. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So can you. See, God's going to give us what we need even in the, even in the face of danger. Even, even in a world that is so filled with deception. Even in a world that is so declined with sin. God will give us what we need if we be willing. When you look at, look at uh, Noah in these days, Olive B. Green gave some great things about Noah. If you'll study your Bible, you'll find that there was two men noted in the Word of God. Two men noted in the Word of God as walking with God. Two men noted as walking with God. That's a little sad considering all the men of God. David was a man that was known as a man after God's own heart. Moses was a man that was known as being face to face with God. Abraham was noted as being a friend of God. But Enoch and Noah were both noted as walking with God. Genesis 5, 24, Enoch walked with God and God took him. Genesis 6, 9, Noah walked with God. What would be our epitaph or however you say that that goes on our tombstone? Would it be that we walk with God? Are we going to be known or noted as one that walked with God? You know, a lot of times the family members will put on the tombstone a picture or a, a saying, a quote that would tell what their life stood out as. I hope I've been enough of a preacher of the gospel that they'd say something about my want to be what I can be for God. Amen. Done great work as a deputy. I, I, I don't want that to be my epitaph that goes on my tombstone. Caught many criminals through his days. Had I got to play football, I wouldn't want it to be a big football on there and say he was a great NFL player. I'd want it to be something that deals with how good God was to me. A lot of us live as if we want to be re recognized and, and known for how great we were at these things rather than the things of God. Now, folks, I, I want you to remember you're in church. We're here for church stuff. So it's about churchy stuff, you know, and serving the Lord. It, it's, it's a place that we come to learn how we can be better servants in God's work. By faith and fear, we can function and reach a fame for God that will count forever, for all eternity. I wonder how many who profess to be followers of God today really walk with God day by day. How many who profess to be followers of the Lord Jesus Christ 
today really walk with him day by day. Noah was a man that was warned of things not as yet seen. He believed in something that had never happened. And we, church, should be believing in the rapture that the Lord has told us is coming. And in believing that and seeing the times that we're in, we should be moved with fear as Noah was and make a difference in getting our family in the ark. Would you all pray for me in that? Would you make it every day your prayer that God would help Curtis to live the life that would move upon his family to the saving of the family, that they would put their faith in the Lord that he preaches? What God revealed to Noah caused a faith in him that caused a functioning in him because of fear. If we got the faith that we proclaim that we have, we would be doing more in functioning with that faith in fear for the unbelievers. God don't call us to save them. God calls on us to share the word of God with them. Noah wasn't responsible for saving the world. Noah was responsible for telling the world what God said about their salvation and what God said about the ark. That ark's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to be telling them about what Jesus can do in saving them because this world is going to hell. We make, that, we make that phrase often, that quote often about the world's going to hell in a handbag. Do we really believe the world's going to hell? When we pull out of here, do we believe how many people's going to go to hell? You know that every visitor, every person that's come through these doors at Tabernacle Baptist Church in 14 years I've been here, I've preached the gospel, I've preached the truth to them in over 14 years. They've had an opportunity to get saved by the grace of God. Should the church go out, they will be doomed to the eternity of hell. Hail. That should dis disturb us. So that we would be in a functioning way that when they walk through these doors, we would not want any sin or anything in our life that would hinder the working power of Almighty God. I want to remind us, church, there is no problem with the power of God to save except us. As I preach Sunday, we can hinder the work of God. Not a, not, a, not a limit in the Holy Ghost power. The limit is in us. I preached here years ago in revival service. I preached it here 2006, I believe. I preached on limiting the Holy One of Israel. Can you imagine Almighty God the all-powerful Lord Jesus Christ being limited in his ability to do things? And it's because of us. He did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. It wasn't because he was powerless. It was their unbelief in what he could and would do that caused his power to not be functioning in that situation. So when we show up at the house of God with sinners on board and they walk out those doors unsaved, it's not God's lack of power. It's our lack of being where we need to be with Him that they might get saved by the, by the power of the Holy Ghost working in here. We hinder Him. We limit Him. May God help us to have faith like Noah. That will cause a fear to cause us to function that we might do things. Noah was moved with fear. Now, have we, I ask again, have we moved on what God has revealed to us? I, I don't believe you go without being burdened. I don't believe that. I believe God Almighty will burden your heart with folks that you can make a difference to. He'll put folks on your heart that you can go to 
and you can be a difference maker in their life. I believe that. Now, some folks you need to go to, like I did years ago with a gentleman that lived beside me. I would not lived the Christian life for a few years that I should have. I'd done things and said things that I shouldn't do as a believer. I went before him, bowed at his feet, and wept with tears. I wet his feet with my tears, telling him how sorry I was for not living like I should have before him and I begged him to give his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ in spite of how I'd lived now I wonder how many would be willing to do that go to somebody God's burdens you with and say look I know I ain't lived just like I ought to but Jesus is still real Jesus will still save and Jesus still wants you might make a difference in their life Moved with fear. He was moved with fear. Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9, 10. And I, 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 believe, that it's, I believe that fear is a working principle in the life of an unbeliever that brings them to the point of willingness of repentance and faith in God that brings salvation. The penitent thief there on the cross said, Unto the other thief, he said, Dost thou not fear God? Amazing how that thief on the cross realized that the one in the middle was Jesus the Christ. And with fear he called on him. Philippian jailer trembled in fear in Acts 16. Choir, singers, Paul and Silas was singing and brought fear upon a Philippian jailer. Paul and Silas was singing and the Holy Ghost moved in. See, it ain't just the preaching. It's the singing. And when we'll sing in a worship spirit under the God of heaven, it'll move God. And when we move God, God will move on sinners. Amen. Philippian jailer got saved as that result. Godly fear precedes repentance. I believe that. And there's a lack of fear these days. You know, I don't know, it's been, what, 10, 12 years ago they come out with that no fear. I thought, how foolish. No fear will cause you to get hurt super bad. If you don't fear what's on the other side of that receptacle, I promise you, you will get woke up. You'll realize you don't want to fool that in the wrong way. No fear of a chainsaw, you can lose limbs. Your limbs, not the tree limbs. No fear of a motorcycle can end you upside down, skin all over if not dead. No fear of a gun could get you hurt or other people hurt. You need fear. Fear's a, fear's a very valuable tool. We need fear of God again. See, people live any way they want to now because they don't fear God. What folks fail to realize, I told a lady I was talking to the other day at the store, I told her, I said, one of the problems we have the day that we're living in, nobody fears God. Because God don't always pay on Friday. God gives grace. God, God deals with you. God draws you to get things right. And when you continually go on, then God brings forth the judgment. He'll chastise, then he'll scourge you. You remember, scourging leaves scars. Chastisement could be with words or with a whipping. But if he puts a scourging on you, you'll have scars to remember. I've got scars to remember some of the scourgings in my life. Not all those scars I bear, some of those scars my children bear. My son bears a scar today as a result of my scourging. My son wears a scar visible to all, not because of something he did, but because of what his daddy did. My son has a scar on his face from an accident he was in that was not his fault. He had nothing to do with it as a five-year-old boy. It was all my fault. I see the scourging of God Almighty on my son's face. 
I've got a reminder of what happens when you get away from God. God's not a respecter of person. He'll do the same thing to your children or you. See, we ought to have some fear of God. If I don't do what God said, if I don't respond the way God told me to, if I don't do God's will, there's a penalty and a price to pay. Noah said, folks, listen, judgment's coming. There's a flood coming. Well, I ain't never seen no rain. Don't mean it ain't coming. God said it. It's going to happen. I can imagine Noah preaching to them with passion in his heart. God said there's judgment coming. I can imagine Noah as he goes on the ark, God said, come on in here, son. And he did say, come in. He didn't say, go in. Come in means he's on the inside waiting on him. God said, come in. I'm, on in, here. I'm in here waiting on him. Come on in here. And Noah, I can imagine Noah going in and he's looking back out the, out the door like, hang on a minute, wait a minute, let me see. Is anybody else coming? Lord, I've been preaching to them. Wait, just another minute, Lord, just another Oh. Are they not coming? Ought to be the way he felt, shouldn't it? It's going to happen so fast with us, we ain't going to have that time. God's going to say, come up, church, and we're gone. That quick. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and it's a lot faster than that. And the church will be out of here, and those that heard the gospel and refused will be given over to a strong delusion. They'll believe a lie. The lie. Fear. We need some fear, folks. And with that function that he did it condemned the world he preached the gospel to those people he told them that the Lord would save if they would believe simple thing they didn't have to do any work they didn't have to build the ark Noah did it God provided for that lost world what they needed to be saved all they had to do was believe walk up on that ark all it takes is for you to believe Sinners, all they got to do is believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That belief, that faith in God will cause some other reactions in your life. I believe just like James said that his faith, he said, I'll show you my faith by my word. You'll show folks, folks how much faith you got in God by the way you live. You'll show folks how much fear you have in God by the way you live. I'll say this, I believe that the reason we're having some of the problems in our churches these days is the church folk aren't living with the right reverent fear that they should have of God. Too many of those are whining and dining with the world as if it doesn't matter. It does matter. Because your testimony going down the drain could cause your family to be left in damnation. I've got family tonight that needs to get right with God. I don't know how many of the family are still lost. I don't know. Some says they're saved. I don't know man's heart. But I've got family tonight that needs to get right with the Lord. So do you. We need to quit uh, covering it up and making out like they're just wonderful children. They're so sweet. They're going to go to hell if they ain't saved. Your youngins, your grand youngins. i got grandkids coming on that ain't saved. If we don't live the life by faith with some function in it, they're not going to believe. They're going to die and go to a devil's hell and spend all eternity. They're not going home. They're going to the devil's home. Never one of us would ever deliver our children to the devil's door. But our lack of faith and our lack of function and our lack of fear is doing just that if we don't, if we don't get it right with God. Sometimes you wonder why I look troubled and sometimes you wonder what's, what I'm, what's on my mind, what's got me worried, what's got me bothered. Is I know that there's people coming in and out of these doors that's lost and undone without God. 
And if we don't perform in the way that God deals with us in the service, they'll walk out that door and go to hell. Now, you may not think much of that, but I'm going to stand before God Almighty with their blood on my hands. Church, I have a responsibility to warn sinners. I have a responsibility to warn the saved. And if I fail to do so, their blood will be on my hands when I stand before God Almighty. Could you imagine standing there at the great white throne judgment? And I'm standing over here and I watch and here comes so-and-so up before God. And God says, Curtis, this one's going to hell and their blood's on your hand. You didn't warn them. You didn't preach it right. You didn't preach it right to your church. Your church was, was lollygagging around. Let me use that word. We just sort of come to church as so casual. It's just church. We're just going to church. Hallelujah. We're just going to church. And sinners are coming in and out of our midst and going to hell because we're not coming thinking and sober-minded about their souls. Next time you're in church, Sunday morning, look around. Don't be, don't be ugly. Just sort of gaze around and wonder. How many sinners is in the midst today? How many folks could go to hell if I don't do what I'm supposed to do? Now you listen to me. Listen to me. This is no obeyed God. His obedience. He got his eight in the, in the ark. He, his wife, and his three kids and their wives got in the ark. He done good. At least he got his kids and their wives in the ark. That's a blessing. He wanted the others to come, but they didn't make it. But he got his wife and his kids in there. Hallelujah. You get your wife and your kids in. You get your husband and your kids in. And if they'll follow suit, they can do the same thing. We'll fill, them. We'll fill up the ark. We can get them in there. We, we've, got to, we've, got to, we've got to bear down and get serious about this thing. But one of us can come in with the wrong spirit, wrong attitude, wrong actions in our lives and unconfessed sin and hinder the working power of the Holy Ghost and God not be able to move as He chooses to move in our service and that sinner can walk out those doors and straight to hell. We've got to get serious, folks. We can still rejoice. We can have a good time in the Lord. The choir can shout it on when we're right where we need to be with the Lord. And we can see sinners saved. We've got to, we've got to deal with some of these things. i got much more. I'm not going to do it tonight. We, we've, got to, we've got to deal with these things because sinners' lives are at stake. God gave us an example as He did the children of Israel, as He did the Jews. We have an example of Noah because of his faith, his fear, and his functions. He reached the Hall of Fame. I, I, I'd like to do that in the right way. I, I don't want to be the wrong marker. I don't want to be registered somewhere else. I, I want to be registered in the Hall of Fame that I've done something for the Lord. I had the faith that caused the fear, that caused the function that got me in the fame. We've got many great things we can do. I could be as good a police or, or better than any in our county. I can brag on that. I think I can. I, I think I can be as good or better than anybody in the county. I was one of the best hunt men there was. That ain't doing me a bit of good for heaven. Nor is it anybody else. I could play as tough a football as anybody that's ever played football. There was a guy named Roman Oski that was one of the toughest, hardest, hitting, craziest things that's ever played football. They labeled him as being just flat mean. I'd have run over him. I thought I could. I was that crazy. See, what y'all don't know is what my name was in football. I had a name. I had a nickname. I had a label on me. 
Coach Dickerson gave it to me. He called me the wild man. I played against David Chambers. David Chambers in the sixth grade was bigger than my daddy. Daddy was 5'10", 190 pounds. Think about that on the other side of the sixth grade. And we had to run in Dead Man's Alley. Dead Man's Alley is you got, you got players on both sides. They make a little, they make a little alley, and you got to meet that dude on the other end right there. And I was crazy enough to hit him just head on. Wide open as I could go. I don't want to be famed for that. I want to be famed for somebody that feared God. And because of the fear in my soul, I can reach somebody for Jesus. Church, in all soberness, our churches have lost fear. We've got too complacent. We've gotten too casual. And most churches will come together and they're so casual, they're eating popcorn and drinking drinks in the, in the sanctuary as if they've come to watch a movie. I'm not up here to entertain you. I'm not doing backflips for you. We come to church for the sole purpose of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ that sinners may believe and be saved. God, help us all. Over the last week and a half, two weeks, I've sat around and thought about my family and your family that aren't coming to church. I don't know which of them are saved and which of them are not. Either way, judgment's coming. If they're saved, they know they should be in church. They know they should be serving the Lord. God's going to bring chastisement if they don't. If they're lost and undone, they're going to die and go to the devil's hell. And we watched over the last two years people die that we never thought would even come close to death. And there's more things out there than COVID. I don't understand everything, but there ain't a one of them died that God didn't know it and God wasn't in it. I don't understand it all. I don't know. Y'all know me. I'd give everybody eternal life now. We'd just live on. We wouldn't have no deaths. But I don't know how to do things right, so God does it. I leave it to him. We'd, we'd, have, we'd have a church full of folks that belongs with us that would be here if they were still here but since God's called them home they ain't here I, I wouldn't let them go I liked them pretty good we've got to we've got to get us where we need to be so that God can use us as he did Noah and those other great folks in the word of God and the number one thing is faith if you believe what he said it should cause a fear it should, should cause a function in your life on this stuff God's stuff when we have fear of storms when we have fear of danger we prepare the best we can to handle whatever it may be there's some storm coming now that they're afraid the rain's going to interrupt the Halloween festivals and they've changed all the dates of them. Out of fear of a big rain, they've made some changes in everything. Isn't that amazing? If they feared the judgment of God, what kind of changes would be made? If we really feared the judgment of God as we should. It changes. God help us. All right. Any any prayer requests before we pray this evening? Remember Miss Nikki? Uh, they went down to Duke yesterday. Remember all that they're dealing with with that situation and other, other opportunities that may be out there. 
Uh, thank you again for helping with the drive to raise the money that was able to help them in some of the needs that they have there. They could use a lot more. I'll just tell you straight up, they could use a lot more. Um, but uh, we was able to raise up a little bit to help them, and I'm thankful for that. So remember, Nikki, Anita, and Brother Chad as they go through these days and what God may have for them in the near future. Uh, remember Miss Sarah, pray that the Lord would work in that and they would speedily get the passports and stuff ready for Monty and them to be able to go get her. So pray about that for a speedy deal. Miss Gail said it could take three or four weeks, I don't know. But pray they'll get that ready as soon as they can and the funds that he needs will be available to go get Miss Sarah and bring her home and be able to get some help for her, get her took care of. So lift, lift that up in prayer, pray much for her and the family in that situation. Remember Corey as he's getting ready for uh, his upcoming medical uh, trainings that he'll be going through uh, with his prosthetic leg and all that's going there, so pray much for him. Uh, remember Brother Virgil's doing some better. Pray he'll continually heal, not fall. Um, be very careful in his up, getting up and down, so pray for him in that. Um, Trying to think if there's anybody else in the medical field right now that needs. Miss Kelly always needs our prayers. Miss Angela needs our prayers. Uh, they deal with things on a daily basis. We lift them up in prayer. Yes, sir. Is it Philip, the son Philip, or the other one? Right. Right. One of those three, okay. All right, remember that. It's the middle son, okay. I think that, that's not Philip then. That's, all right. All right, remember, remember the Lambert family there and the one in Texas dealing with cancer. All right, remember him, lift him up in prayer with his new battles. Any other requests this evening? Yes, ma'am. All right, remember that. Scott Jr.'s got a friend that's dealing with esophagus cancer in his young 20s. Pray the Lord would work in that situation both ways, physically and spiritually. Amen. Unspoken Brother Scott, Miss Kay. All right, remember her mailman. On that, they're, they're already projecting chaos for the next couple of months. How they can already project that, I don't know, but it's amazing, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Miss Karen. Was that one connected to the refrigeration crowd? Okay. All right, remember that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
All right, remember those folks. Anyone else got a request? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. Just keep praying, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Brother Rick. All right, remember Brother Rick's brother Rodney. Anyone else got a request? You get anything on there, Clarence? No, sir. Okay. Remember Miss Ann? Yes, ma'am. All right, remember that Miss Darlene spoke with a lady that needs prayer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Remember Miss Donna's kidney stones there. She's still got a little battle going on with that. And as you pray, remember Brother Stacy. He, he has lost a kidney, and he still deals with kidney stones. So another attack of stones can be very severely devastating to him. And he's got surgery coming up in a few days here, so... Um, Huh? I'm not sure what the date was, but it's coming up. So remember him. They're going to fix some of the previous surgeries that they've done. He's got some herniated areas. I think he's got three areas that's herniated on him. And they've got to go in there and try to patch that up, which is a very uh, tough surgery. So pray that all that goes well for him. Yes, sir. Well, you just mind the Lord, brother. Amen. Amen. 